Ty, you know, I reject the idea of any student being at the margins. Um, I think that that's a way that sometimes students internalize and see themselves as somehow less than or not quite as effective, um, and that somehow their expectations for their lives are diminished. So I prefer to look at it from this perspective. There are some students who have been reared in economically under-resourced communities that need additional support in order to to really, really capture their, their best possibilities and all of their potential. So there are communities around the world that don't have access to all the things that many of us take for granted in life. For example, uh, the community surrounding Paul Quinn College is in a food desert. Right now we're 10 miles, or 10 minutes from downtown Dallas, but literally we're four miles from the nearest grocery store. So a student that grows up in a community where the only access they have to food are fast food restaurants and convenience stores is coming from an under-resourced community. We teach our students that there's real strength in the idea of entrepreneurial thought and entrepreneurial action. So we tell our students that there's something that you don't like, you possess the power to change that. You have everything that you need within your mind and within your soul and within your willpower. So for example, we don't have a grocery store, we turned our football field into a farm. All right, that was to address that issue, to teach people that there are going to be lots of folks who invest in what you don't have. You need to be a person that invests in what you do have, and what you do have is more than enough to begin to turn things around. So we just believe in the power of teaching people to do for themselves. I just think people deserve better. Right? I mean, as you look around and you think about all the resources people have in the world, I mean, I'm amazed when I travel the globe and I see these communities and I see these countries that are so wealthy and have so much and yet there are segments of their population which have so little and it just makes me angry right I mean there's no radical um, thought to it I, I was raised in a home where my parents told me that I had a responsibility to lead and I had a responsibility to give voice to the voiceless now I didn't know always what that was going to look like you know I, I went to law school with the expectation of becoming a civil rights attorney and somewhere between graduate school and law school, I realized that the fight wasn't in court anymore. The fight was about economic development and economic access. That if you can teach a man to feed his family, you can change that man's family. If you change his family, you can change that community. Change the community, you can change the city. Change the city, you can change the country. So I believe in the transformative powers of entrepreneurship, of teaching people without to become people with. It's just that simple. So I don't know when it started, I just remember it always being there. One of the things that I didn't know is to the extent that globally people were struggling with as much of the same issues. So when I practiced law, we didn't talk about this kind of stuff. Um, when I was representing NBA players, we didn't talk about this kind of stuff. But as I engaged more in my life as a college president, I became more and more aware that this wasn't just a Southern Dallas problem. This wasn't a South Side of Chicago problem. This was a world problem. And I can't think of too many better places to come have that conversation than the Salzburg Global Seminar, where you're bringing in people from all around the world who care about these issues deeply and are willing to invest and engage a week of their time as part of their entire lives to dealing with these issues. So I just feel blessed and fortunate to be able to be here and look forward to returning.